मैम थैंक यू वेरी मच या थैंक यू एंड इट्स माय प्लेजर यू नो आई एम ऑलवेज देयर टू एंजॉय लेक्चर्स एंड आल्सो शेयर माय व्यूज whether in and out i do it so i i don't know how much time you are giving me but uh, soon after me dr abha will be joining <clears throat> you know also far since yesterday we are hearing the police officers telling about the investigation of crime we also heard forensic scientists talking about the various scientific techniques and all about crime today we are talking about the psychological aspects of crime we are talking about the human behavior whether they are the investigators police investigators judiciary or the forensic scientists they are one side who are investigating whom are you investigating you are investigating a man who had committed a crime and any an act of crime have two individuals or more than two individuals in there criminal actor and the actor the victim and the victimizer now you know in profiling of criminal behavior this is very interesting to note that when we go into the criminal tendency we say oh oh it's a khatarnak criminal hai no the point is this every individual has an iota of criminal tendency in them even we have we are professionals but we have also put in the same condition and the same duress in the same frustration we may either go into depression we may either take sedatives we may either commit suicide if not harm another person so the human psyche is such that criminal tendency existing it can any time evaporate and made person commit crime but i am talking today of those criminals who are committing and getting convicted or you are still waiting you know i have been interacting with them for long decades let's say more than 40 years traveling between the in the prisons between the prisons interacting with the prisoners and even i got in it for god's blessing that i got an opportunity to counsel the juveniles who can be you can say the next breed of criminals if they are not rehabilitated criminals so that encouraged me to talk on profiling of criminal behavior there is a there is a very good formula which i want to share with you the formula says that crime quotient of crime crime is depends on the criminal tendency divided by the social consciousness of the individual and its situation is the constant the formula is this in a given situation if the criminal tendency is high and the consciousness or you can say the restraint the conscious restraint is low crime is bound to occur in the given situation let's say there is a bank fraud let me start with case based maths and i'll go along as i do it that there is a bank fraud now this is being done by employee inside the bank now what happens is there is a man who is needy probably he is wanting money maybe for daughter's marriage or maybe to pay out some debt and he, he while he is counting the money at the end of the day he is all the time planning how oh, i wish i could have had this deal of money with me and one day you know this is the urge that is the tendency makes him carry that money into his bag not into the locker of the bank but into his bag to the home he has said i'm not a criminal i'm not an offender i have done it and i'll pay it paid back by tomorrow but the tomorrow may not come and by the time he gets arrested and he becomes a an offender and at now in the given situation let me share another there is another case of a man who is desperately in need of the money the moment he is counting the money he says i wish it had been mine but i cannot because then the restraint comes he thinks of his family he thinks of the social stigma he thinks of you know his fame he thinks of the police arrest and conviction so he keeps the money quietly withdrawing his temptation into the lock now this is what sadalan said right in the beginning that when the person is learning because i have been repeatedly been telling in all my classes and even now i'm sharing that crime is a learned behavior nobody is born criminal so in this given situation as i said that here 
one man did not fall into the temptation, did not commit crime. The other man fell into the same situation, the same temptation and committed crime and got arrested. Right in the beginning, this is a little theory that I want to share with you so that you understand. Sutherland said that there are two individuals, two boys, the same age of the years of seven or eight, they had gone to the ice cream stand. It's a very common example cited by everyone. Gone to the stand to have ice cream. The ice cream man was missing. So one put his hand in, inside the box, took out the ice cream and went away. The other boy stood, waited for the ice cream man, paid the money and took it. Now you know what the difference is? The difference is this. The first boy who went away without paying money got pleasure from the act. And therefore, he will repeatedly do the same thing unless he's punished for the act. So there is a proneness towards crime. He gradually moves towards the criminal behavior and he can become a juvenile offender. And if he's not corrected, not rehabilitated properly, he can become an adult criminal also. I'll share a case here. And this case I was counseling, but it was difficult because then I'll come to a personality profile which correlates with the criminal case. This boy, he came from a broken home. And his father was there, not there, mother and grandmother. So all the time he used to stand, uh, spend outside with groups of friends taking drugs and everything. And he went into crime. He was put in prayers. This is an actual crime. I'm not hypothetically giving. In prayers, he escaped from prayers. Not only really that, he, along with the team, even went into the court, which is nearby, tried to break the law. Then they were arrested. He was later sent, because of his age, to Kingswick camp, where I was there. I was asked to give him counseling. The very feature of his, the very look of his eye, the very conviction with which he gave his statement, showed no sense of guilt, showed no remorse. He never repented. He said, I'm all right. It is the police who are arresting me. I'm not doing anything. But the, you know, the interesting part of the story is that this little boy had such an impact on his the peer group inside the prison that whatever he used to say they used to do, he became the master of that juvenile culture in Kinsway camp. After a few months, he was having a hold and, you know, therefore the welfare officers also were depending on him for everything. There was a escape from that correction room. There was a lot of piles were burning. Escape had taken place from the terrace they all ran, broke up in the things, and he was the leader who did it. He was not able to be caught, and when he was caught, he was put behind in, you know, in uh, another jail of special court there. And later, when he got released, he was bailed out because three years he can still stay. The first thing he did, he, along with his members who were outside, he went into a jeweler's shop, killed the wife of the jeweler, ransacked the house, and got arrested. And then he was placed in the hard jail as a young offender. Now, such a person, I went on, you know, then I was profiling him. What I got to know that this boy, had he been properly brought up, because he continuously told me, that I don't look back because I had nobody to guide me. Police should leave me whatever money I've stolen, openly used to say, give that money back to me, I'll start a new life. There was no repentance. These type of people, when I start to profile, I find they are high on the psychology. I'm okay, you're not okay. And this, you know, whenever you study the criminals everywhere, cases, whatever, even in the organized crime, high scams, petty offenses, you will find everywhere this feeling prevails. I'm okay, you're not okay. And as long as this prevails, the repentance doesn't come and it's very difficult to reform. So, you know, when, as I move, you know, because we are talking on criminal psychology and because why I introduce this topic in this area, we cannot deny and neither can we ignore the fact that human beings is a psychological being with a, you know, with a sociological background. So we cannot just say that put them in forensic investigation. 
put the narration. After all, they are human beings who have and why have they committed? And what was the mensaya or the intention to commit? This all, you know, comes from the part of the criminal behavior. Again, you know, I'll now again go from case to case. So you'll see then in the latter part, I won't take much time. I'll go into the profiling, the scale that I've developed and is working effectively. I'll go from case to case and you will understand how one pattern of crime is not the same with another individual. A individual who commits same crime over and over and over again, like a serial rapist, serial murderer, they are known as perverts. Somewhere, you know, they are psychotics and they do it without any. But generally, generally what happens that criminals, they commit crime in their own way. They, they plan it or they, you know, they are somewhere they are thrown into it. Sometimes the tendency comes up. The signature of crime, what Dr. Abha will share, you know, also differs with the personality pattern. A very interesting note. Forensic scientists, when they go into the investigation of crime, often and on they will be interrogating, interrogating, interviewing, testing whom? The criminal and the victim. There again, the mindset has to be studied. Now, here I want to share another case. You people will very popularly know the case of uh, this uh, Hyderabad case, you know, where a girl, she came down from the, she was waiting at the bus stop. Probably she was waiting for her sister to pick her up. Her own vehicle had broken down. In the meantime, three boys came. I just want you people to recall so that, you know, I can then, you know, passively follow the thing. Because I always, when I see a criminal, I try to study the mind of that person. And, you know, three boys or three, you can say, adolescents, youth, approached her, they gagged her, they kidnapped her, they took her to a distant place, they raped her. Not only that, they burned her body and put the body down and went away. It created a lot of sensation in Hyderabad. Police went in search and you know how? There were a lot of clues left. This is something very interesting. A person who is committing crime, doing it intentionally, and they have no regrets, they will leave clues behind, which enables the forensic scientists and the police to understand, you know. But not always, not always. Here what happened, police from the slippers that were lying down, certain clothes that were lying down, the body was burned, half burned. They could identify the body. The sister came and said, this is my sister's body. Police then started tracing the accused, or you can see the, the boys. They were not criminals at that time. The whole case, they got it, the clues, and they arrested the three boys. And what happened in that crime scene? Again, the whole incident was reconstructed. They were brought. And they were brought and they were asked to replay what has happened. And they did it. It was not forced. It was not coercive. They were forced. They were, they were asked and they did it. They said, this is how we did it. And they were with glee. They said, this is how we did it. The police got so enraged that they shot them there. And you know, the response was, we were on the judiciary. Judiciary didn't like, naturally, the law was taken by the police in their own hand. But the public reaction was so high. They said, here the justice is given to the victim who has passed away. And here's a message being sent to others that henceforth do not do this type of crime against women. Now what happened was, even the chief of the police, you know, they were suspended for a while, but later they were reinstated. And police chief, you know, gave them the support, even the state government. Now, I know very well, this is not the right approach. But why did the police do it? There comes the mindset. You know, so we are having a triangle of human beings' minds working together to solve a case. Police said that these three people 
as they go behind bars after a some time they will get bail and come out or they will be given a, a sentence of 7 years 8 years 9 years and they will be there enjoying all the food and other uh, facilities of prison what will happen to this woman who is burned what will happen to the sister who is still crying and this is how you know they did it this is not right but they did it that was the mind of the police now these three boys they were not in the least grateful they were not you know at all having any grief for what they have done rather they reframed the whole thing and they showed what they did can you understand this can you test polygraph on them and uh, narco analysis on them they are doing it in the same way we have done it so in this case what type of if you ask me as i have profiled in my criminal propensity scale what type of mindset they have they are psychotics and they are not only psychotics they are also extroverts which means that they move about everywhere they make friends and they can dupe their friends throw them the stab on the back kill them without any regret my scale has been tested on many occasions even the terrorists who were committing such a lot of heinous crimes killing planting bombs and waiting aside and seeing they have no regret so this is one part where i am talk telling you that when we talk of criminal psychology criminal psychology is an inter- because criminal psychology gives the impetus to the whole investigation how can you overlook it how can you ignore it because criminal psychologists will enable the forensic scientists and the police to understand that this type of individual will commit this type of crime or this type of individual if you release him from the prison again he will commit crime and become a repeater or a recidivist so criminal psychologist plays an integral role in the whole system of the criminal justice now let me go to another cases you know from cases and cases while you i'll go on explaining you will understand how the mind works a normal individual i said that every individual has a criminal tendency in them it is how we restrain and keep it within ourselves you see the scam you see the organized crime you see the white collar crimes you see the type of people in the political circle or in any circle highly misusing their offices misusing misusing their status and going into crime they couldn't restrain it there is couldn't restrain themselves so please do not think they are about any personality or they are something unique they are part of the system it is the personality which compels them to do it now i learn it another case now here you see a case which is something different from the other a woman i know very well this case also came out in the paper and i have visited that scene of crime it was in krishnanagar delhi this woman is to get beaten up by her alcoholic husband every night she had two children and she tried to run away he brought her back she went to her parents she was not educated she was not employed she was illiterate so she was helpless the parents said we can't do anything so she had to come back then she shared her problem with her relatives they also you know she sometimes said she he said we can't do anything for you so she decided to do something on her own she became desperate yahan pe ek concept aata hai frustration induces criminality one goes to the deep steep frustration so wo ya to apne ko maarta hai ya dusre ko maarta now in this case a this woman see what happened that one day husband of taking alcohol and you know abusing the wife he went off to sleep her tolerance level had broken up now she was intolerant criminal tendency has gone up like anything the children had gone off to sleep she put a pillow on his face suffocated him or gagged him to death after doing so she pulled his body somehow herself and pushed it into the 
you know the, uh, the bed which has the baggage the, the below thing for the night and she slept on the bed and the body the dead body was in that you know box of the bed in the morning the children started asking where my father has gone so she told them that you all go go to school dress up and take your lunch walk very comfortably very calmly she was doing the job and she said your father has gone to the market the eldest son became something suspicious he looked at his mother she didn't say anything he went away now what the lady did there was one person who used to see you know nearby neighbor she used to share her problems with him he came and she said this is what i have done at night now how to get rid of the body so you know they both of them pulled the body and took, took it to the water tank on the terrace and dumped it in and then you know there is another thing you know this is like it going up and then going down this very lady started weeping there crying so fast she was putting up her strength and did it but then the pain was so acute that she broke down and she said went on crying to the extent that when the children came she told them this has happened she confessed to the police when the police came in she got arrested and she said i was finding everything unbearable so i did it now you know this type of personality if you ask me to describe according to my criminal propensity scale she was an introvert who was putting all her problems in herself she was helpless and hapless but at the same time she was planned the crime dekho ek jo hai crime plan nahi karta hai spontaneously karta hai and the other one plans crime in a such a manner that the clues are not left the traces are not left police also find difficulty in tracing the cases even the forensic scientists you know they find difficult in the investigation in studying the crime mind in studying the clues because this person plans it in a very acute man she was arrested no doubt and she had gone to the bar but and the children and we are behind bar but the children were also sent to the gang but the cases now this is one where a person is pushed into crime so according to me i will not teach her treat her as a criminal i'll say she's a victim of the situation she's not an offender is a victim of her own situation this is known as victims victimization where the victim justice system should take another look again i'll come to another you know now i will share with you a very simple case this case is of a boy now you see often it so happens when you one masterminds and when i'm sharing all these cases you people go on recalling in your understanding your mind when one masterminds a criminal pattern organizes groups to commit crime organizes big scams they definitely have to have lot of intelligence because intelligence correlates and corroborates the pattern of crime now here is another case where i will tell you that how this boy got into trap she was he was his mother was asking him to get into a job and bring some money they were from you know generally counseling that i should do in the observation homes you will know in our country they are children from marginalized homes children from poverty stricken homes but we must not ignore the fact that from these homes only many a children become habitual criminals if they are not being intervened if they are not being reformed if they are not being we have now in this case this boy was continuously being harassed by the mother saying bring money bring money get into a job bring money he was not that highly educated he was semi literate so media also friends there's a lot of damage as you are hearing many of the people saying you heard dr ruchi saying that media often plunges into disclosing things which should not be disclosed so where the accused becomes the victim and the victim becomes the accused according to the projection of the social media now here what happened was that this boy was continuously listening 
and hearing about kidnapping, blackmailing, becoming rich all of a sudden. So he said, why not I try to do it? So you see, now see the scheme of his. He was tracing a boy who was his neighbor and who used to call him as big brother. So he said, why not kidnap this boy? So one day he stood by the outside the school when the boy came. He said, come, I'll take you to your uh, uh, mother. Here is a chocolate, come along. And he gave the chocolate, took the boy aside in a distant remote place. And from his mobile, he rang up the police to say, he rang up the family, sorry, family to say that your son has been kidnapped. You come with this ransom and release him. Now you see, I make an emphasis that he did it from his mobile. They traced the mobile and they came to the spot where this boy, by this time, he was sleeping, having a nice color. And the, this one, the juvenile offender, was waiting for the police and family to come and give the ransom. The family came with the police. The juvenile got arrested. So when I was counseling him, always I saw tears in his eyes, a remote look, a vacuum, a vacant look. I could very well understand that he, once again, the moment he moves out from this home, he will land into crime because he's an easy target for the gangs and the goons and even elderly, elderly gangs, mafias, peddlers, drug smugglers, they use these children for their job. So innocent, he didn't know that he was going into crime. He thought he will get easy money. So this is another type of person who you will address, not at all, at all a psychotic, not at all a psychotic, but he was an introvert. And he was not neurotic, but not high in it. He has just entering into crime. And how we prevent it? Through my counseling and through my access to the superintendent and others, I said, give him something to work on. And he started learning, stitching and sewing along with other inmates. Later, he joined them and he moved to another place and he got rehabilitated. So such children need intervention. Because today, whatever we see in the criminal behavior of any an adult, we always keep in mind that they were indulging in crimes over and over again. There was nothing to prevent them. But I again go to another case. Another case. Because these are all fulfilling my, my strategies, my talk on the criminal propensity scale that is analyzing the criminal behavior. This is another very renowned case of Vive, uh, Vikas Dubey. Vikas Dubey, from young child, he had a feeling that his father was a Pradhan, so he can do anything. So he used to, you know, mobilize groups and used to go about teasing, go about, you know, uh, uh, taking uh, uh, money or whatever it is, you know, from the villagers. He became a sort of fear phobia for the villagers, all because he enjoyed power of his father. Gradually and gradually, he started coming into extortion of money, stealing and robbery, teasing. He got married also. He had a family. He got arrested. This is the unfortunate part of our criminal justice system. Also, I have no hesitation to say that this person, as a young offender and even an adult, he was continuously getting bail and coming out and going back. So for him, jail became the second home. And moreover, he started manipulating and organizing crimes inside the jail, which has happened often. You hear in Tihar jail, it has happened in the late past. Now this man, because Dubey, every time any party came, you know, they started using him for getting vote banks for starting and coercing people to give votes. So unfortunate. He was highly intelligent. He could have been used into some productive job. <coughs> but because of his allurement of for money and for power, he was going close to the power. Political parties were using him as a scapegoat to collect votes. And he enjoyed that. He didn't mind getting into prison. He didn't mind 
the committing crime and he became a repeater recidivist habitual criminal finally i think i just mentioned to you you know better what i when i mentioned the name that again in one crime he did it collected money murdered and he ran away and he was got arrested by the up police he was brought from kanpur while he was brought going to be brought from kanpur to lucknow they say but i have observed the thing on the media <clears throat> on the tv that he ran out from the car saying that i am going for my uh, nature's call and while he ran slippers fell down he ran police shot him from the but i know fully well that here it was not that he ran he was asked to run and he was shot from the back because the moment he would have entered inside the jail again some political party would have pressed the bond to give him the bail and this is happening in our country here there is no need of forensic science because in an open game of crime done by these types of people again in my tale they fall as psychotics extremists they will commit and they will go on committing without any regret so what i want to convey is this that we talk of now now narco analysis and other forensic this uh, this thing polygraph if you test on these types of criminals i term them as hardened criminals they are so strong in the mind they will cross the test and the forensic scientists will look helpless knowing fully well the kind but and and another thing on the basis of the evidences collected from the situation because these psychotic they leave evidences thinking they have done right i'm okay it's easy to collect and they can pass all tests also so criminal behavior as you know repeatedly criminologists are studying we are researching you will find that a person will commit a crime different from another person or when you know people mobilize and go into a group there is brainwashing ideology becomes like in the case of terrorists terrorists say we are not terrorists we are poor men's friend okay but they are so mobilized their brain is so washed they are so head strong with their ideologies they can mix and gel with people and they can again you know throw people asunder recent case very recent case which is still going around the country and creating lot of discussion lot of social divide it is of the tailor who got beheaded by the terrorists now i don't want to go into religious discussion but i want to say these two people who had done it they are so strong in their mind that they are doing right because they have been trained like that it's difficult for me as a psychologist to intervene and say no you are wrong that wrong should have been put right in the beginning as a result the criminal tendency is so high that they have no feeling what others will think of them they do not consider any evaluation any you know perception any sort of description from the society to say you have done wrong because for them it is right so friends therefore you know i can go on with cases and cases but i will say therefore what happens that when we that when we talk of serial rapists when we talk of serial killers we will find that these people are different from the normal criminals now you know petty offenders people on the street generally what happens criminal justice system as marx said is meant for the poor it's very true the other day you know we have it was in the paper a law minister has said that very powerful criminals or you can offenders as long as they are not been convicted they are not criminal they are suspects and offenders they have such 
heavy paid lawyers who take not less than 10 lakhs he has come out with it then how can you convict them what happens to the poor they depend on the legal aid service they do not get the proper service as a result they go on you know suffering inside even though sometimes the crime is not there they have been framed in the crime so the need of the r is that now there should be a formidable a cemented a built up and improved system where all the sub systems should work together including the you can see the criminal psychologists or the forensic psychologists because after all we must measure the mental behavior the mindset the psyche not only of the criminal also of the victim because here again i before concluding let me share this also otherwise you will go side track sometimes it has come to my notice also when i visit the correctional uh, the homes and the prison and through news that in, let's say in the case of rape or sexual offence the so called victim the girl has i won't say collaborated has incited intrigued a boy to go into relationship with her later she under maybe pressure of parental pressure maybe under her own this thing she turns around and accuses the boy and the boy is held up this has happened dr abha will bear with me in amity itself engineering college department a boy had two years he was suspended from the department he lost his work he lost his studies later it was realized he was framed but do you know what has happened to this boy in the meantime he has gone totally into depression so therefore i close my thing by saying that this is not the end this is the beginning we have to go on striving that if we really believe in victim justice system if we really believe in the criminal justice system that the criminal is not only always the criminal can can be the victim of the situation the actual victim the victim that you were maybe the criminal who has conspired and plunged her behavior her thing to frame the person whom we are seeing as a criminal the person who is a criminal is a victim in the given situation so putting all these things aside we as forensic psychology or criminal psychology what we do we discern we distinguish we try to you know try to describe that here is the person this is the signature of crime this is the type of crime the person is doing therefore there are correlates this is what i'm trying to convey in the end there are correlates between the personality the attitude the emotions and the upbringing the faulty upbringing the social background the class or the race the person belongs to these all contribute to the criminal propensity of the person and the higher the criminal propensity believe me until a proper intervention is done the person is bound to commit crime and crime and become a habitual for him it's no issue so i think i have shared any questions here